Monday, March 15th, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at how the BIS confirmed to me that uh, gold is not a tier one asset nor a tier two asset. There's been a lot of, uh, in my opinion, misinformation, a lot of speculation about this for about two years, and it's come from one source, uh, and that is Andrew McGuire. Uh, before I do that, though, today is the Ides of March. It's the day that Julius Caesar uh, was assassinated 2,065 years ago. Uh, so what does it mean, the Ides of March? Well, it's the 74th day in the Roman calendar, and it corresponds to the 15th of March. And uh, some people see it as a, a date that could uh, bring uh, uh, ominous uh, events, uh, so to speak. You had the assassination of uh, Julius Caesar. I think it's a little bit of uh, superstition. But anyway, it is the Ides of March. So before I uh, show you uh, the reply I got from the BIS, I sent them an uh, email last week. I just want to put this subject to rest. Uh, I wanted to say that the BIS is the equivalent of OPEC, uh, and it's much older than OPEC. It is the OPEC of banking or money. And I've done several videos about uh, the BIS, and I've referenced a great book that, uh, if you're interested, you should get, in my opinion. It's called Tower of Basel. So the Bank of International Settlements, or actually it's the Bank for International Settlements, uh, is based in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland, of course, has been a neutral country for, for many years. And uh, Basel, uh, having lived in Switzerland, I know Basel quite well. I used to go, go there uh, to play golf. And actually, the Basel Golf Club is in France, <laughs> which sounds weird. But Basel is right on the border with France and Germany. So it, it's a perfect place for an international institution. Um, so this is the book here, The Shadowy History of the Secret Bank That Runs the World, Tower of Basel by Adam Libor. I'm going to be brief. Uh, about uh, the history here, because my point here is talking about this tier one asset question. But uh, it was created uh, in 1930 uh, through uh, international treaty. And the purpose of the Bank for International Settlements was to settle the uh, World War I reparations and also the young uh, loans that were uh, given to Germany in 1930. Uh, and that, yeah, that was the reason uh, for having the Bank for International Settlements. It has now become something completely different. Uh, and I, I, I add that <laughs> during World War II, uh, you had central bankers from all the warring factions working together in Basel, doing business in Basel. Uh, didn't have anyone from the, the Fed, but there was a banker, an American banker, who was running the Bank for International Settlements. Uh, uh, McKit McKittrick was his name. And uh, after the end of the war and during the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944, towards the end was 44, uh, the uh, Norwegian delegation demanded that this bank be uh, abolished or dissolved. <laughs> and you can understand why, what happened to Norway during World War II. But the British delegation, under the leadership of John Maynard Keynes, that great to economists, right? Uh, he blocked that, so they kept the, the Bank for International Settlements. And, and I think, yeah, as I said, it's become like a, a meeting place for the major central bankers of the world. They go there every two months for a few days. Uh, they have their own like private rooms up there in the, in the Basel uh, Tower, and, and they have dinner, fine wine. I, I don't know if they're doing this still during the lockdown, but um, yes. And uh, when they travel on BIS business, they travel on uh, international diplomatic passports. So they can't be stopped anywhere in customs. Their documents are sacrosanct. So the BIS is treated as a sovereign entity. <laughs> so uh, j Powell has a uh, 
a diplomatic passport, believe it or not. So do all the, all the other major central bankers around the world. And uh, this was one of the reasons why they created the BIS. This is the young loan. Uh, I've got some of the, uh, I bought some of the German government uh, uh, international loan uh, bonds, thousand uh, dollars here at Bear Bonds. Unfortunately, I can't <laughs> claim the uh, coupons anymore. Uh, as you can see here, it was claimed up until uh, June 1945. So it shows that uh, the BIS was working <laughs> during all that time during the war. And then after June 1945, you can see it stopped being paid. Uh, and uh, it would have been paid up until, let's see, 19... I think uh, 50, is it 50, 1960. So as you can see here, it would have been, it was a 30 year bond. So yeah, this is proof that the BIS was operating uh, during World War II. So I would say this book is the equivalent of this book, The Creature from Jekyll Islands. This is for, for, for the Federal Reserve. This is for the BIS. And I would say the BIS is the granddaddy of all the central banks. It's the central banker's uh, bank. Uh, the BIS uh, used to, until maybe 10, 15 years ago, they used to do all their accounting uh, in what they called gold francs. So they know what gold is. They know that gold is money. And I'm not here to bash gold. <laughs> uh, I've been telling my viewers that uh, gold is the only way to protect your savings. Gold uh, is the ultimate cash, really. Uh, what we call cash today are just promissory notes. That's another misconception. Silver, of course, as well. But I like to do uh, my research. I, I like to back things with facts. And uh, I, I just don't like to tell people things without having any backing for it. And this has uh, kind of uh, bugged me, this thing about gold is going to become a tier one asset. And, and people, it's not important if it does or not, because uh, <laughs> it's the most important monetary asset anyway. And it doesn't matter what a bunch of bankers say about it. Uh, so, you know, we, we've had gold go from $250, $250 in 2001 uh, to $2,000 last year. And gold was not a tier one asset. So does it really matter? Uh, no. So Basel III, that's the, uh, because the aside from being a, a cartel for the money man, the BIS also regulates the two big to fail banks like the JP Morgans, the HSBC, the Barclays, the Deutsche Banks. So um, they, they have something called the Financial Stability Board and uh, Basel III is just a response to the crisis of 08. They had Basel II before, so you can bet if they have another big crisis, they're gonna have a Basel IV. So it, it doesn't really seem to matter, but uh, let's go through here some of the uh, articles. And this has been going on since March uh, 2019. I spoke about this a, a few days ago, uh, that uh, at the time people were calling already that March 29th, 2019, gold was gonna become a tier one asset under the Basel III rules. So here's an article from Gold Broker. Strong, the strong return of gold to the banking system. Will the date March 29th, 2019 remain in the history of gold? Certain, uh, certainly because it marks the resurgence of precious metals in the banking and financial system. Indeed, on March 29th, Basel III agreements uh, international banking solvency standards issued by the Bank for International Settlements, the Central Bank of Central Banks uh, in particular, modify the accounting of physical gold uh, enter into force. Article says here, until now, gold has been classified as a tier three asset uh, with a risk assessment of 50%, which required banks to tie up equity capital to cover half of the amount held this did not encourage or even discourage banks from investing in precious metals. From now on, physical gold is classified as a tier one asset. It is considered equivalent to cash, i.e. without risk and therefore without the need to uh, 
immobilize equity capital. So this was, of course, according to Andrew McGuire, as you can see here, uh, he uh, describes himself as a uh, precious metals or gold whistleblower. Uh, I think when he came out, he, 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 uh, he was uh, called a, a Goldman Sachs whistleblower, even though he hasn't even worked for Goldman Sachs. And then you get uh, articles uh, also coming from Andrew McGuire and Kinesis. How will Basel III rules impact the gold price? And this is from December last year. And now they're saying that gold is going to become a tier one asset, <laughs> which they said was uh, happening two years ago. They're saying that it's going to happen now. So this guy is at it again. Uh, it says, what is Basel III? Uh, what will change? What are the implications of Basel III? Andrew McGuire reports that Basel III rules coming into effect in March 2011 through to March 2021 will eliminate the 50% evaluation haircut on physical gold reserves. Uh, so again, he's at it. Uh, actually, he um, he knows what he's talking about in terms of the market. But uh, in this case, I think he hasn't done his research. It says, what does Basel III mean for for banks, gold reserves? Currently, paper gold is not a tier one asset, only fully allocated physical bullion uh, that has no counterparty risk attached uh, attached that qualifies it uh, as a first tier uh, one asset. As we mentioned earlier, Basel III rules coming into effect uh, in March uh, through to January 2022 will em eliminate any valuation uh, haircut. So there you go again. Uh, so as I said in my video a few days ago, I called the BIS uh, two years ago and they told me, no, gold is not a tier one asset. This time I didn't call them. I sent an email. <laughs> it's cheaper than making an overseas call. So this is me, dear sir, madam, um, I'm writing to inquire as to when or if gold will become a tier one asset under Basel III rules. Could you also let me know at what tier gold is classified at the moment under Basel III rules and whether the BIS plans to make gold a tier one asset in the future? So I got the reply this morning, it says, dear Mr. Ineco, thank you for your interest in the Bank for International Settlements and the work of ba the Basel Committee. Uh, regarding your query, uh, please see below our off-the-record comment. You are free to use our publicly available material in your research with appropriate attribution. If you have any further queries, please don't hesitate to contact us. So here we go. Uh, the treatment of gold on the Basel III Committee's global capital framework has not changed and there are no plans at present to change this treatment. Uh, banks holding of gold are treated as an asset on its balance sheet and are not eligible as an element of regulatory capital. So regulatory capital is tier one and tier two. See paragraph 96. In addition, uh, chapter 2035 of the Basel's Committee Consolidated Framework sets out the standard approach for credit risk as a, it applies to indiv individual claims. A bank's regulatory capital ratio is calculated by dividing its equity, also known as regulatory capital, uh, the numerator, by its assets, risk-weighted assets, the denominator. See page three of this in brief document. So this is the important part here. It says the designations of tier one and tier two apply only uh, to regulatory capital. And if we go back, uh, it says a bank's holdings of gold are treated as an asset on its balance sheet and are not eligible as an element of regulatory capital. So there you go. It's not either tier one nor tier two, and they don't plan to change that according to the uh, BIS. So one thing they say, though, or this individual, her name is uh, Bettina Eberhard. She says, for market risk purposes, gold is treated as a foreign exchange position 
rather than a commodity because its volatility is more in line with foreign currencies and banks manage it in a similar manner to foreign currencies. So there you go. Uh, not tier one, nor not tier two. So uh, yes, <laughs> hopefully that puts that question to rest about gold becoming a tier one asset or even a tier two asset for that matter. It is not, and the BIS doesn't plan to do it. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. So it's just before 8.30 a.m. London. Uh, we've got spot gold or the paper gold price uh, trading at 17.25. It's down just over $2. The high's been 17.34. The low has been 17.2150. Uh, silver is basically unchanged at 2592. It has been as low as 2578 and as and as high as 2622. The Dow future is up 83 points. Nasdaq future is down six. S&P future is up three and a half. The foreign exchange uh, market or the foreign currencies, we've got sterling. Uh, up slightly at 139.31. The euro is down 0.2 of a percent versus the dollar at 119.30. Uh, dollar is uh, up slightly versus the yen, 109.11. Dollar is up an eighth of a percent versus the yuan at 650.40. High grade copper is down about an eighth of a percent at 413. WTI crude is up just under a percent at 66.18. So uh, we finish off as usual with the uh, bond market. The 10 year yield this morning is down uh, one uh, basis point around 162. Of course, this week, the major event for the markets uh, is gonna be the FOMC meeting, which starts tomorrow uh, and ends on Wednesday with the uh, uh, the uh, announcement from the Federal Reserve, and then the press conference uh, where Jay Powell will be uh, answering questions and making uh, his uh, initial statement as well. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great start to the week. Take care. Bye.